Today's lesson, we're going to talk about point-slope form. When we talk about point-slope form, uh, I, you may have heard me say before, or maybe not, mathematicians are not particularly um, clever when they name things. They're very functional, which is a good thing for us. So the reason that you would use point-slope form is because you know something about the line. Maybe you know what one point of it is, and then you know the slope. Uh, usually what we're most likely dealt with in the past is slope-intercept form, that y equals mx plus b thing. That's slope-intercept form. Now, we're not talking about that now because we don't have this part, which is the intercept. We don't know anything about where the y or where the line touches that y-axis going up and down. So say we have our graph here, and we know the slope, but maybe all we can see is this much information. So we have no idea where it crosses the line or it's in a weird place that's hard to calculate. If we could find a point on that line and a slope, then we can use point-slope form. And this is what point slope form looks like. y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. You probably have uh, access to some formulas page or your memory or whatever to help you remember. Let's talk about the form first for just a second. It looks a little different than y equals mx plus b uh, or slope intercept form. It's not really that different. Still got the m there, so slope is still a major component of this uh, setup, whereas in standard form, sort of but not really. It's not a direct uh, interpretation like it is here. Now you'll notice that y minus y sub 1 x minus x sub 1 thing. It looks a lot like the slope, or yeah, the slope formula. So that would be y sub 2 minus y sub 1 equals x sub 2 minus x sub 1. But in order to do the slope formula, we uh, would need two points. But in this case, we already know the slope if we're using this form. Otherwise, why would we use it? We'd try something else. So in this case, it's important for you to realize two big things. Number one, the slope is positive. So if you have a negative slope, you just put negative in front of it. But you don't have to do anything weird. The part that gets weird is right here. The negative y sub 1, negative x sub 1. Now you see that little subscript there, that 1 and that 1. That would be indicative of us having an actual value to plug in there. Say the point is 3, 5, or our coordinate looks like this. And our x would go here, and our y goes here. These values stay y and x. They adjust for the idea of we are making a, a line, so there's kind of a sliding slope. Um, what are we doing when we plug in x? We get this y. That is adjusting for that. But the y sub 1 and x sub 1 are the specific point that we're already given. The issue is, because of the way that the slope formula is set up, we need to change the sign on both points. So I'm not just going to put 5 here. I'm going to put minus 5. I'm not just going to put x or 3 here. I'm going to put minus 3. If it was negative 3, I would change the negative to a positive and put x plus 3. It just depends on what the question asks you. Let's do a couple problems of the types that you'll see, and I think maybe it'll make more sense, or maybe not. Who knows? All right, so one of the problem types you might see is write an equation in point-slope form for the line that goes through the given point with the given slope, which is like the longest question ever, really, or direction, I guess. Um, and I've made it worse by being super loquacious for some reason. Anywho, um, in this case, they give you a point, and they give you a slope, and they just want you to put it in the form. My suggestion to you is you write the form out first. The reason you'd bother with this is because it makes it really easy in the future to make sure you know how to do it. That way you don't just do it one day, and then tomorrow you come back and, oh, you forgot how to do it. I'm assuming if you're watching this, you might have a test with this on it. So remembering how to do it for right now, not as useful as remembering to do it later. The big thing that you really need to look at is the signs in front of the values. Where to plug them in really isn't that complicated. This 3 fourths is going to go where the slope goes. The m here is positive, so all I need to do is just rewrite it exactly like that. So I'm going to put 3 fourths. Previously, I may or may not have mentioned that the y's and the x's without the subscript don't do you don't do anything with them. They're there to give you some sort of direction, make that line so you can have multiple values on the line. Otherwise, it would just be one point, and that's not a line, it's a point. So you can write them if you want. The key issue to this type of question is to change the sign in front of the x and y because it says x minus x of 1. So it should be x minus positive 8. So this should be x minus 8. On the other side of it, it says y minus negative 3, or y minus negative 3. Minus negative is plus. So y minus negative 3 is the same thing as y plus 3. So I'm going to put y plus 3 
right there. And that's it. And if, if only the only thing they want is to put it in point slope form, you're good to go. So y plus 3 equals 3 fourths x minus 8. And you could, you know, make sure it's right by making sure the sign's the same here. You change the sign on the 8, change the sign on the 3. Not a big deal. You may hear the announcements in the background, by the way, but don't worry about it. I'm not listening to it. Uh, the next session section asks you to convert slope intercept form or to slope intercept form from point slope form. So I'm just going to reuse the equation that we had before and talk about how to do that. It's really not super difficult. And write it down really fast. Now, the issue with this question is I need to get it in slope intercept form. The key to slope intercept form, of course, is y being by itself. Why would you bother even doing this? The reason that you want to do it is so you can graph it. Usually to graph it on the calculator, it's much easier to graph on the calculator if you're already in slope-intercept form. So that's the reason you would do it. I mean, there's other reasons, but why bother with those, right? Um, so really, I just want to get y by itself. So I'm going to make a little circle around the y there to get it all by itself. And I'm going to follow the same rules I would if I was solving an equation. Draw the line. Do the distributive property. 3 fourths times negative 8 is negative 6. Bring down y plus 3. Y is still not by itself, right? I need to get rid of plus 3. I'm going to subtract. Now, this x term and this constant term are not like terms. They're like shirts and skins, so we can't put them together. But I can take 3 away from negative 6. Negative 9. 3 fourths x y equals. And that's all you have to do. You really just take the original form, do distributive property, get rid of whatever's with y, and if it's zero, one of the values is zero, it makes it even easier. So that's all you have to do to convert it to slope-intercept form. Let's talk about how to draw a graph for these things. What is the graph for y plus 1 equals negative 2 thirds times x minus 4? Now this is point slope form. Point slope. So I can take that information and make a nice little graph for myself. I'm going to find the slope first, and I'm just going to write down negative 2 over 3, because I don't need to change that, right? The other thing I need to do is find the point value. Now, the x and y comes directly from the problem. The x goes here, but remember, we have to change the sign. So instead of negative 4, it's plus 4. And the plus 1 becomes minus 1. Very simple. Now it's easy to graph, more or less. I need to find the point 4, negative 1, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and then down negative 1, make the dot. From here, I can do the slope, negative 2 over 3. Well, instead of, usually I'll go down 2 and right 3, but say I'm kind of running out of paper, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to go up 2, left 3. Up 1, 2, over 1, 2, 3, make a big dot there, connect the dots. And that's it. That's all I really need to do there. Just find the point and then go the slope from there. And if you wanted to do down two, so you'd go one, two, and over three, that's fine also. It doesn't matter. Up and, up and right and down and left, same basic idea. So in this case, that's what the graph looks like. Um, they may also give you the graph of a line and ask you to find the equation for it. My suggestion is that since it's point slope form, You find both components. First thing I need to do is pick a point. I'm going to pick negative 3 and 4. For slope, I have to figure it out. So I need to use the slope formula. By the way, it's really easy to get in the habit when you do slope formula of just typing stuff into the calculator and hoping for the best. Much easier is to write it down. It takes about three seconds of time to do so. And then you make sure that you get it into the calculator correctly. I'm not saying don't use a calculator. Don't get crazy. Um, so I'm going to mark these up, x, y, x, y. These are my 2s. These are my 1s. So my y2 is negative 2 minus y1, which is 4. Um, my x of 2 is 3 minus negative 3. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. 3 minus negative 3 is positive 6. So I get a slope of negative 1. Make sure I'm not losing my mind there. Yep. So it should work just fine. 
Um, I was a little nervous because I made this question up myself, and it's weird to get like a regular slope. I was expecting something kind of crazy, but it is what it is, so what are we going to do? So it's uh, negative 1. Now, I need to do the equation itself, so I'm going to write the, slope f uh, the point slope form down on paper. Seriously, this step can make all the difference, and it takes almost no time. Uh, my y sub 1 that I'm using is going to be 4, so I need to change the sign so it's minus 4, so I do y minus 4. m is negative 1. x minus x of 1. Uh, change the sign on negative 3 to make it plus 3. And that's it. That's the point slope form of the equation. It's really not that difficult to do. And the last type that you're very likely to see is because they love them some tables. Uh, given the following table of data, write an equation in slope-intercept form. Now in this case it asks for slope-intercept form but we don't have an intercept because it's a d uh, unless you want to graph all this which is craziness but you do have lots of points because it's almost like here is your comma so 2 and 3600 is a, a perfect point to use so since I need to convert it into slope-intercept form first thing I'm going to do is put it into point slope form. My point that I'm going to use is 2 and 3600. My slope I have to figure out. So I do the formula y sub 2 and I can do y y x x 2700 minus 3600 4 minus 2. The nice thing about this is that the x's are on top of each other but and so are the y's. That's kind of a nice little treat from the norm, I guess. So 2700 minus 3600 is 900, or negative 900, I should say. So negative 900. And then 4 uh, divided by, or 4 minus 2 is 2. So my final slope would be negative 450. So that's my slope. Here's my point. So I need to put it in point slope form first. y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. Plug in my values. Uh, x of 1, of course, is 2. And remember, change the sign. So instead of minus 2, it's plus 2. Or instead of plus 2, it's minus 2. I was thinking about something else. Sorry. So this should be x minus 2. Sorry about that terrible little mark there. Same with the y. Um, the y is 3,600, so it's minus 3,600. To get into slope-intercept form, remember, I need to get y by itself, so I'm going to do the distributive property. Still not done, because y is still not by itself, so I need to add 3,600. That cancels y is equal to negative 450x plus 4500. And that's all you really need to do. And it kind of matches what the graph says. It says that, um, I mean, you'll notice that this keeps going up by 900 each time. So 0, which would be the point that this would represent, or the intercept would represent, uh, would be 900 more, which is 4500. And it keeps going down every 2 goes down 900, half of that is 40, uh, 450. So really simple way to do a uh, point slope form. Hopefully that's all the question types answered and uh, you won't have such trouble with your assignments. So good luck.